were the events that led up to your diagnosis? Um, I was actually uh, sleeping a lot, coming home from school, sleeping a lot. And uh, oddly enough, my, uh, my family thought I was on drugs. <laughs> so they made me go into uh, a patient first to get drug tested, but uh, at the same time I was having a, um, I had a rash on my body, which we thought we would just do both at one time. Um, never got to the drug test, obviously, because uh, they looked at the rash. They, uh, they drew the blood and uh, ran the numbers and um, said, you have to go to MCV immediately. I started my soccer season up and I noticed my knee was hurting really bad and I thought, oh, I've been playing soccer for 12 years. My, they're, my knees are old, so I'm just going to go to the orthopedic sports medicine doctor. So we went to see him and he ordered an MRI and that's when they saw the tumor. My leg had been sore for like a month, so I've been going off and on to the doctors um, until eventually they sent me down to the clinic. Um, and that day I was diagnosed. When I first found out I had cancer, I was pretty terrified. Um, didn't know much about it. I knew cancer was a bad thing and I could see the fear in my mom's eyes and I still didn't quite get it, I guess, until the doctor was talking about surgery. Then I knew it was serious. It was a little bit of a whirlwind when I was first diagnosed, I'd have to say. Um, they didn't quite know what it was. Um, they thought at first I was hemorrhaging from the inside and it took a couple of days to figure out what exactly I did have. You know, I asked her, I said, uh, do I have cancer? She's like, yeah. And I was like, I thought only old people got cancer. I never knew a child with cancer, um, so I didn't know really how to react. I just remember going outside and there was a hammer laying on the picnic table and I just picked it up <laughs> and I just beat a tree with it for like 10, 15 minutes or so. Then I just came back in and got my composure and that's when she called back and she talked a little bit about what it was and what, what type of cancer it was. At first, they'd had me on nine rounds of inpatient chemo. I had to get chemotherapy first, six months of intensive chemotherapy. Two years of chemotherapy. A year of chemotherapy. I think it was a year. I did chemo for about three and a half to four months. Um, I was on normal chemo, but that actually didn't work. It didn't put me in um, remission, so. I was told that my only chance of survival at that point was a uh, bone marrow transplant. Uh, they, they chose to go with something more aggressive, so I had to have a uh, bone marrow transplant. January 8th, I had an allogenic um, bone marrow transplant from my older brother, Brendan. My brother ended up being a donor. My sister was the match for my bone marrow transplant. I did autologous, so I used my own bone marrow. I did a stem cell transplant, which was actually a month in the hospital. The Gleevec medicine was not working anymore and um, they decided to do a stem cell transplant to basically put me in remission. I was in remission for about a year and then I had the news that I had relapsed like two weeks before my one year anniversary. All it takes is one little cell and uh, sure enough it came back. My cancer came back in my hip in 07. Two weeks into radiation therapy, I relapsed. I was now Hodgkin's stage 4B, <laughs> which was the Advance, advance <laughs> stage. The second time around, the prognosis kind of felt like it was, um, let's kill everything and then some. I had my leg surgery, which is where they take out um, half of my femur and do a total knee replacement. They didn't want to waste any time, pretty much, in this case, because my diagnosis was that they were going to have to go in and amputate my leg to get rid of the tumor. They said that it had come back in my right frontal lobe, which I mean, which it hasn't been before, so it was somewhere new, and we're still f currently fighting. On May 18th, I got the new bone marrow, and so I've been recovering from that. The worst part of treatment was probably being so tired all the time and not feeling up to doing stuff with my friends or normal day-to-day -day stuff. Just not being in my home, in my cozy area. The hospitals were great, but at the same time, you know you're not home. The mouth sores and throat sores. You can't eat, you can't drink anything. You're just on IV and with fluids and stuff all the time, and it hurts so bad. Well, the chemo was awful, unfortunately. 
Yeah, you, you feel really sick and tired all the time, pretty much. I mean, the hair loss is definitely tough. I mean, people tell me that they went through an awkward phase. I'm like, oh, no, no, no. I went through my awkward phase bald, like, bring it. <laughs> I was in the, like, the little kid section because mm -hmm. the teen section was all filled up and I wasn't familiar with the room and I actually had a allergic reaction um, to the platelets and I was trying to find the little remote thing to call the nurse and I couldn't find it anywhere and I was shaking real bad and no one was there so eventually I went in the bathroom and pulled a little one in the bathroom and they found me on the bathroom floor. I had chemo radiation and a stem cell transplant mm -hmm. and um, and so with you know, those things combined, you, you definitely, you acquire an entirely new body. Mm -hmm. um, my lungs will never be the same again. Um, lost a good percentage of my lung capacity. And I, I remember I used to be able to, and I used to love doing this. I would hold my breath, like, for ridiculous amounts of time. It was probably like the most unhealthy thing ever. As a kid, you know, in the summertime, just going as many laps as I could. And now I'm like, I, I can't even try. Mm -hmm. um, so you definitely, you, you learn to adjust um, with your new body. Mm -hmm. Aside from those things physically, I, I would consider myself completely lucky. I've definitely grown closer with my mom and I'm really grateful for that. It, it has changed my life for the better. Um, people I've met in clinic, um, the places I've been able to go to speak, um, the uh, organizations that I've been a part of. I've, I think 99% of all of my experiences I've had were positive that, you know, happened to me because I was diagnosed. It has definitely propelled my success and, and allowed me to deal with my success with more integrity and with more humility, I guess. Uh, one of the positive things about having cancer is is that um, it does make you a little different, and I I think it's a good a good different if that makes sense. I like standing out a little bit. I mean, I, I use my crutches that are all painted up. This is my way of being different. I look at it as a building block to build upon, as something that you know not everybody has to go through, but yet it's something I experienced, and I, I'm grateful that I did experience it the way I did. Um, it's made me grow stronger. I understand people better now. Um, and I just, I have a whole different perspective on life. I feel like I was maybe left on earth for a reason. You got to see the good in people, whereas, you know, you grow up, especially as a kid and a teenage, uh, during that lifetime, you see the cruelty of kids and, and you know, just the, the pettiness. And um, I got to step away from that and just see the, the goodness of people who actually care and want to do things for other people. Um, and things like that and, and, and you kind of take that and learn from that and that becomes a part of you Which not everyone gets the opportunity to, to experience for themselves, you know, it, it's it's devastating to go through but to get through it and 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 after all the people that I've met and you know people that I call second families and because I, I wouldn't I wouldn't change that for the world I mean, I'd go through it all again just to keep you know everything like it is now night I got diagnosed my mom called one friend in particular who I guess was more worried that um, her child was gonna contract the disease so it was, that was a little hurtful but she still you know talked to me on Facebook and stuff but it seemed like they kind of it was more of like a step back because it's weird and I know a lot of people like don't know how to handle it so I don't really like hold anything against them but it's true like a lot of cancer kids say how um, when you have cancer, it really shows who your true friends are. I became really close to my family because they, at first, they, you know, everybody thought they were going to lose me and stuff. But at the same time, I got further away from people at school because I was in middle school and you know, they didn't really know what was going on. And I wasn't at school to sit there and to keep these friendships going and stuff. And I guess they were just scared. And every time I like talk to them on Facebook or something like that they would kind of like I mean they would talk but they wouldn't be really interested in holding a conversation I guess they were just scared and didn't know what to say. Being diagnosed in the end of a school year in March 
Um, I wasn't allowed to go to school until June, and which was like the second to last week school was getting out. So going back to school wasn't what I thought it was going to be. I had it in my mind it's going to be like, oh god, these kids are going to like stare at me. It's going to be something that it's going to be like tra traumatizing to go back. It wasn't that bad. Um, some of the kids that were in my class actually were on the baseball team. So when I came back, they had all like asked questions. It was kind of like a little party. Nobody really looked at me any differently. They just asked a few questions about what it was like to be in the hospital. So it really wasn't what I thought it was going to be. It wasn't talked about in a taboo way. Um, before I was diagnosed, there was a kid in my class, and um, the way I was diagnosed, my eye was swelled shut. So it looked like somebody had punched me in the face. And I can remember going to Thomas Dale High School for an art show for like choir, fifth grade course. And we were coming out and I heard a kid yell Cyclops coming across the parking lot. Well, this was before I was diagnosed, so I didn't think anything about it. I just laughed about it. Well, I came back to class and he looked at me and he said, I'm sorry for ever saying that to you. I had a boyfriend at the time when I was diagnosed. And then he came and visited me in the hospital. Um, and then soon after he broke up with me devastating as a 13-year-old, um, but uh, I was still friends with one of his, his best friends and then, you know, later on down the road found out, you know, he broke up with me because I had leukemia, which, you know, I'm sure to a 13-year-old little boy too, that's a hard thing to, to deal with itself. I wasn't held back. I probably should have been held back. Um, I went back into the swing of things probably my freshman year of high school, but there's definitely a huge transitional phase with, between school and still having to go to tons of doctor's appointments and um, trying to figure out where I was socially. Just because, you know, when you miss, you know, two years of middle school essentially and you're thrown into high school, you still have middle school mindset because um, you, you didn't get to really grow up with the other peers. And so, of course, you know, I, I go into ninth grade and I'm an insane middle school acting ninth grader. Mm -hmm. I mean, I was still a good kid. I got good grades. I never got in trouble. But I was definitely, like, way high energy and way, like, all over the place. Mm -hmm. And I didn't, it took me a while to realize, like, okay, Dana, maybe you should kind of tone it down just a little bit and that kind of thing. And, I mean, I figured it out, but I, I definitely had to, um, go through a little annoying phase, I guess you could say, and I mean, you live and you learn. It was a little harder to hang out with my friends for a while because I was um, just in, you know, in the hospital or at home, but they did a really good job of coming to visit me and uh, keeping my other friends that weren't, that I wasn't as close with but still really good friends of mine, keeping them, you know, updated on what was going on and uh, and they, when I was when they knew that I was okay to go out and do stuff, like they were the first ones to say, "Hey, let's, you know, let's go out and let's hang out with, you know, these people. Let's go see a movie or let's go do something." So, I think that, yeah, it made it made me a little different, but I think that, you know, we all embraced it and it, it turned out really well. A lot of my friends, they totally acted different around me. Like, if they breathed on me, I would die or something. And some of them just acted normal so they all reacted differently but I think I acted the same towards them. Of course I couldn't see them so I kind of drifted apart from from m most of them um, and I really got angry at them because I felt like you know I'd go on Facebook and see them they're out having a good time and stuff like that and I'm like how can they be so selfish? I, I I don't know why I, I would think something like that. I do feel sorry for thinking that about them because, you know, they're human. They they don't understand, but um, I did feel quite upset at them for a very long time. I was pretty popular um, in school and, and it kind of helped because I went to a small high school, you know, total student population probably like 350. So everyone knew everyone. Um, and everyone knew me, so I think it made it easier for me to maintain uh, friendships with uh, my peer group because uh, it, it was like they were going through it with me because my school was actually very supportive of me um, and it kind of got the entire school um, 
basically educated their entire student body because to my knowledge, I perhaps probably one of the first students at my high school who was diagnosed with you know, a childhood cancer. You know, I never had visitors except for family in the hospital. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was my choice. Mm -hmm. I don't know, I, I felt like this was just my own battle that I wanted to go through. Um, didn't need other people. Um, I uh, didn't want to bring them down. Um, you know, maybe it was because I didn't want to show any weakness either in myself. Um, but I also didn't want any sympathy from others. Um, and, you know, it, again, it was kind of just, it was my own thing. I didn't, I didn't need to share something like that with other people. I would say my relationship with my family changed quite drastically, actually. Um, I started spending a lot, a lot of time with my mom. Like, we've grown really, really close over the year. I mean, she not only would take me to get chemo and stay with me at the hospital, but I needed help showering, I needed help drying off, getting dressed. So we kind of got a little closer than most girls my age and their mom would get. The biggest change when, when I was going through treatment with my family probably was that we actually got closer. My father, um, who was not very much of a person who showed a lot of emotions, he um, definitely showed more emotion. Uh, during that time. I, I was the middle child, so I wasn't a baby. I, I did have a, a baby brother and, um, you know, older sister. Um, there could have been some jealousy, um, you know, within uh, my siblings and me, but um, I don't think that hurt our relationship. Um, you know, probably just a little bit of civil rivalry, but I think overall it definitely brought my family closer. You know, I feel so bad, you know, for sometimes, you know, when you're on different medications or you're on prednisone and things like that and you you kind of snap at people and you know and your parents uh, especially mine I feel bad about that but they were always there for me they never gave up on me they uh, I mean they've been through the same thing I've been through they didn't have to physically go through it but emotionally which is pretty tough they went through it if I was in their position I would feel the same way I mean I would worry to death about my child you know and, and what was going on but thanks for them for being strong and, you know, is they're just amazing people. I am one of the luckiest people in the world because of my family. Um, my dad was able to provide for my treatment and, um, and that in itself is a huge, huge feat. Um, and my mom was the person toting me to every every everything, whether it was treatment or an event I would get to go to or whatever it was, she was always there. She's my wing woman. My parents are still parents. They wouldn't let me, you know, be a brat and if I was I had to apologize for it and I'm glad that they did that. I mean of course at the time I was like, feel sorry for me, you know, whatever. Let me let me milk it a little bit. But um they they held me to a pretty high standard and I'm really, really glad that they did. Uh, I can't help but feel bad that, you know, my older sister, she's five years older than me, you know, my, my mom's with me, my dad's working, so she kind of had to fill in the role for a mom for my little brother. She was the one toting him to baseball practice and helping him with homework and stuff like that, and so I'm like, great, you know, her senior year of high school and her freshman year of college was spent, you know, doing that stuff, and you never want that. It's funny because uh, just the other day I was talking to my mom about we, we had seen a movie where um, cancer, like a childhood illness, started like really eating away at the you know, foundation of the family that was going through it and it was like creating problems, but we, we were commenting on how our family, I think we took it really well. Um, my sister, she had to write an essay recently for college and she, uh, she wrote about how our family actually was stronger with with this illness than maybe we had ever been so I personally think it brought us maybe even closer I didn't I actually used to fight with my little sister a lot but after after that we realized you know, how important we are in each other's lives so I think it was it it didn't hurt us at all my biggest emotion would probably be um, anxiety, because, I mean, no one can tell you what's going to happen with your case. They can tell you 
previous cases, but they don't, and they, they are good about saying, you know, this is what happened in this case. We don't know exactly what's going to happen in your case, but at the same time, it's kind of scary because, you know, things change for everyone. I was never was, uh, like, just furious. Um, I mean, I, you, I, I've had my moments, but I just learned that uh, I think that positive attitude and uh, just uh, making yourself be normal, pretending to be normal and being happy and just, you know, putting your best foot forward always, just having that attitude, best attitude is going to make you well. You know, you're, I think that's probably 85% of your, of your healing is, you know, on your own personality and just pushing forward. I guess I could say I was hopeful because even from the beginning, I, I mean, I was, I knew that I wasn't going to, you know, pass away or anything like that. And I knew that I was going to survive this and kick its butt. Even though I had some really tough times and my family was there, my friends were there, and I had a big support group, so I was really hopeful. I wasn't depressed at all. You know, I don't think I was scared. Um, and I wasn't angry, you know. But I, I just think I was mostly anxious going through it because there were so many uncertainties. You know, it, it not only affects you, but it affects your entire family. You know, there are a number of financial uh, things that occur in your family. You know, there are a number of responsibilities that parents must, you know, now take on because, you know, they have a child that's diagnosed with, you know, cancer. So um, it was just anxious of how my family was going to deal with, with it. Sometimes I just get frustrated that I couldn't do things other people are doing, like sports and things like that. The second time around, it was more isolation. You're in that phase of your life where you just want to fit in. The only people you care about are your friends. Um, you want to know who's going out with who. And, you know, all that dumb stuff that, you know, middle schoolers and early high schoolers are wrapped up into. And, um, I mean, when your white blood cell count is negative, um, you can't go to the movies. You can't go to the grocery store even just to get out of the house. You can't go over to your friend's house, you can't have a friend come over unless their temperature is taken. And so that whole like wanting to feel normal thing was impossible. Um, so that was definitely, that was, that was a struggle. I just, you know, I wanted to be seen as